А сега ще минем именно към глобалните тенденции на електронната търговия с един изключително интересен дискусионен панел, за който ще имам нужда от помощта на няколко мъже. Любомир Чулаков от Айсбар. Къде сте? Ето, виждам ви. Заповядайте. Андрей Попеско от ЕМАК. Бен Маркс от Мадженто. Благодарение на Екстенза е тук. Къде е Бен? Ето го. Здравейте, заповядайте. Ще направим панела на английски, заради участниците, естествено. At the end of the conference today, we will be speaking more about scaling and growth. And today here we have three different types of participants in the e-commerce ecosystem. Isobar is a system integrator working with platforms and marketplaces, or social media and experience agencies. Emac is a marketplace, a local one, and then we have Ben from Magento, who, who is a platform representative. So uh, probably let's start with a one minute intro of each one of us, and then we can start from there. Okay. Ben? Yes, so I'm, uh, I'm Ben from Magento. I uh, was a developer, and uh, now I've become a manager somehow. Um, but I go, I, I go around the world and interact with our uh, extensive uh, developer and solution partner uh, community. Uh, and that's about 300 nights a year that I'm away because it's a really big community. Um, Magento is a software, um, it's, it's an e-shop, uh, e-shop in a, in, a, in a box, if you will. You just take that box and um, uh, then do whatever you need uh, to satisfy your requirements. Strasti, I'm Andrei Popescu. I'm a country manager for IMAC Bulgaria. Uh, IMAC is online top shopping destinations in the region. We are present in four countries, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, and Poland. And we plan to expand in five new countries. We run a business to consumer business, but also we have B2B. And uh, we split the, the business to consumer business into, we run also first party model, combined with third party model, which is marketplace. Thanks, and uh, I'm part of Isobar. We are system integrator working with Salesforce and Hybris and Magento as a company. And we work with global brands like Adidas, Clorance, and uh, Shiseido, and Disney, and many others to deploy them globally in terms of e-commerce. So my first question to all of us is, uh, can you share some examples of best practices of growth in terms of your customer base? And, and yeah, Ben? OK. Um, best practices in terms of growth. Um, well, you have, to, you, have to pick, uh, you have to pick the right platform, right? So you want to pick the platform for growth. Um, now, you may be surprised to hear me say it, that's not always Magento. Very often it can be, but um, really it, it just comes down to knowing the requirements of the business today uh, and then knowing where the business is going to go tomorrow. Um, so um, having, having a platform that can adapt um, is probably that's strategy number one. Um, and then beyond that, it's just making sure that you are collecting uh, sufficient, sufficient data uh, so that as you're you know, turning knobs and moving levers on your, on your customer base, that you um, that, that that you're able to get that feedback quickly and, and, and understand what's working and what isn't very quickly, um, and I'm really curious to hear your answer to this. So how we are scaling uh, our customer base? Well, speaking about marketplace, we have a dedicated team. We have uh, 40 people working in the marketplace team, enrolling every month to. Uh, around 200 new sellers in, on, on our marketplace platform. Now in, in, on Imac Bulgaria, we have more than 3,000 sellers, active sellers who are selling on our platform. We have also a three months starting period for the new sellers. It's about the nursery team. This is how we are uh, calling. They are helping 
the, the new sellers to learn the, the platforms, how to sell more and how to start uh, to, to have their, their first sales. Uh, we, we have also a marketplace platform. We invested a lot. We, we have, uh, we have uh, very, good IT people, very good IT people in Romania. Our marketplace framework is uh, built in house. This uh, means that we have a lot of flexibility. Um, and uh, speaking about how we increase the, the customer base, not only the seller base, the customers, our customers who are uh, ordering products for, uh, for EMAG on first party and third party product, it's about um, offering wide range of products. Now on EMAG Bulgaria, we can find, you can find around 1 million products. 700,000 coming from, from third party. Um, and this is the secret, our secret, let's say, <laughs> I'm sharing with you. Um, <coughs> we are seeing more and more companies battling in terms of customer experience and the way they would like to approach uh, customers in a completely different way or more unique type of way. What are some of the examples you're seeing of retailers blending their marketplaces and their own commerce sites strategies. <clears throat> you want to take this one? I can start, yes. We, I personally think that it's about omni-channel nowadays. So uh, think about booking.com. It's about a big, flat, big platform uh, with a lot millions of hotels around the world. Um, the statistics are saying that usually for a hotel, 80% of the bookings are coming for these platforms and 20% from their own site. Uh, why booking.com is working and why other, plat other marketplace platforms are, are working? Because uh, a big platform like uh, Booking, like uh, Amazon, like Emac, for example, brings a lot of traffic. So it's, it's for, ex for, EMAC, for example, Emac has uh, 6 million visits per month. Uh, imagine a market shop, a physical store with six million people entering in, in a store, in, in that store in a month. Um, we are in top websites visited in, in the region. Um, this, is, this is most of, uh, about it, so to, to combine your, uh, your, your, your own website and your pres the presence in, uh, on, the, on the marketplace platform. Huh. Yeah, so um, it really, it just comes down to finding your customers where they are. So, you know, if you've built, you know, you've built this, this great facility, right, this, this place, this destination where people know. Um, and depending, you know, I think in any of us in here, uh, depending on what we're shopping for, we're going to go for a certain experience. Sometimes that experience is with the brand. Um, and that, that's something that brands can do to really, uh, depending on what, you know, basically what kind of relationship they want to have with their customer. Um, and we see you know, those trends sort of you know, going this way and this way, uh, depending on where you are in the world, right? Because what, we've seen, what we're seeing in, in, in Asia Pacific is um, where you have this proliferation of marketplaces, you now have brands and sometimes the manufacturers wanting to go uh, digital to consumer, um, I'm sorry, direct, direct to consumer, um, you know, that they're, they're trying, they're now engaging with platforms uh, to sort of take the customer back from the marketplace. But what we tend to see on average across the world is uh, if you have something that you're selling, um, you may have a site, a destination site for your consumer, but then you want to be able to share, um, you know, sh essentially share that inventory to the marketplace. And so we've, you know, we've got some strategic partnerships um, and, and some connectors uh, that allow you to share your catalog with various marketplaces, not just the big worldwide ones, but some of the regional ones as well. Um, and and that, that's, a, that's a good strategy to, to, to try and find where the needle moves the most. Uh, it's a good starting place. Imagine also that, um, for example, a Bulgarian customer wants a, a product, and uh, in, in Bulgaria market, he couldn't find it, and enters in the marketplace, for example, in Mag, Amazon, whatever it be, and uh, he will find the product sold by another seller from Romania, from China, from Germany, I don't know. Uh, for sure, he will not find by himself the, the site and the product in other country uh, entering on, on, on the website. 
Okay, and another trend we are seeing is companies are usually selling direct to consumer, as Ben said, but also they sell to other businesses as well. And they have this joint business to business, but also business to consumer type of business. Um, what are some of the trends you're seeing in terms of merging the B2C experience with the B2B one and how customers are applying these strategies on both marketplaces and platforms? Well, for uh, we definitely, um, Magento as a software, um, an open software, our, uh, it was, it started out just B, um, B2C, so just business to consumer. But we ended up, without even trying, becoming one of the top platforms like in the mid-market for B2B because people were just taking our solution and adapting it. And when we dig into that, and so eventually, of course, we released B2B functionality. Um, but you know, as, and as part of that process, as we were digging into this, what we found was that um, part of, the, part of the, the reason people were doing this was because there was a need to make that, to have that kind of controlled uh, relationship with, you know, with controlling the buyer journey, right? So personalization, like the same things that, that matter for a B2C situation now, that's kind of become the expectation and for a lot of B2B cases, right? So people essentially, it's not just a utilitarian thing that they're doing, like, oh, I've got to go uh, resupply, you know, using this portal. They're actually developing a relationship with um, a relationship with their uh, with their their B2B vendor. Yeah, it's 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 um it's it's a really interesting thing to see um, to see how that because this is a space that you know there are still people like sending faxes to you know to 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 order things again. I mean this 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 place has been ripe for disruption and we're seeing it disrupted. Yes, we discovered also this B two B is a has a great opportunity in in the region, also here in Bulgaria. We we as on IMAG, we have also a corporate team. We encourage also other local entrepreneurs to buy from from our uh, from our side, from first party or third party, and they can sell afterwards uh, their product to to other markets. Uh, especially, we, we see a lot of opportunity in, in small cities, not, not here in Sofia, but especially in, in other cities in, in Bulgaria and Plovdiv, in, in, in Borgas, especially uh, where the real estate now is uh, increasing a lot. And um, to wrap it up, what are some of the key trends or top priorities or things that customers need to invest or have in mind to grow their business in, in the future in terms of online? Um, first of all, they need to be active. So a seller to have sales, they, he needs to be, to be active, to, to be present there. Uh, I, always tell that it's, I always say this, it's a golden rule. So you, have to, you need to have the right product at the right price at the right time. Right product means to have a wide portfolio of products and to have uh, your products in stock to be delivered easily for, uh, for the customers. Right price, yes, we are talking here about a competitive market, so you need to be there with the price in the market to have a, a better conversion right, rate. And right time is just to, to, to be there, to, to, as I said, to, to have the product and uh, to deliver fast. Now everybody's... Um, putting a lot of value, uh, in, uh, of the, uh, oh, it's, it's about time value. So now time is more precious than, than never. Everybody's running here and uh, uh, it's easier. We, we think that it's easier now with, uh, with the online shopping. Um, then it's about customer service. After the, the product, um, after you sold the product as a seller or on, on the marketplace, it's about servicing well the customers. Usually small businesses, because they don't have a lot of products sold every day, they are calling their, their customers and they're th saying thank you for, for buying from us. We'll deliver the product in one, two days, maybe. Uh, and then if something happens, I don't know, uh, they have to be there to help the customers to, to have a good experience, a totally uh, good uh, purchasing journey, let's say. Uh, what else? If they do not prefer the marketplace model and they are um, focusing on their own site, it's about investing in, in their marketing, to use Facebook, to use Google, to, to use everything, chatbot, as we, we, we saw already 10 minutes ago. Um, so you need to be visible, 
people to hear about you, and also it's about uh, the free marketing, which is the free marketing. People to share stories, good stories about you. I'd say our perspective as a you know platform that can enable this. Um, you're right. The onus is really on the business owner to to make sure that they're delivering on that that personal that that, that expectation of personal business. I mean, um, you know, at Magento we, we we have this mantra that that we use, which is uh, we make make you know every experience personal and every moment shoppable. And what we mean by that is uh, kind of what you were saying, Andre, which is um, which is you know. You know the right, the right product, the right place, the right time, the right customer. Um, knowing where your customers are, and 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 um, and I guess the way you do that is make is is by uh, just just voraciously consuming the data that's out there. Um, the, the merchants and brands. If you're in the business of selling stuff to other people, you have more power in your hands to have more insight into what works and what doesn't for your for your customers than 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 you ever have before. Um, I mean, we were talking earlier uh, about like you know we're part of Adobe now, and 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 Adobe is a as a data collection company. You know, we're collecting literally you know trillion plus interactions, I think, a year, uh, maybe more. I, I could be horribly misstating that, but it's it's um, you know, and this this gives you incredible detail um, into into that customer journey and how that af affects him or her. Um, so paying attention to data, um, and. Uh, and then I think beyond that, you know, we are seeing uh, probably the next big trend that we have uh, identified is uh, progressive web apps, uh, PVA. Uh, this is this is a this is a transformational technology that is actually it's 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 not overblown. It's it's happening, um, and it's making it's making more people more accessible to merchants um, the world over. And it's making for those of us who are already like you know. Buying a lot of stuff online, it's making those experiences a lot better, um, and 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 that I think is is uh, in the end, if we make it easier for everybody, we we all we all make money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would agree that progressive web apps is really a hot trend right now. Um, just a quick example: last year, Icebar delivered for Asda the the mobile shopping experience with PWA. It decreased dramatically the load speed of the mobile site. It increased conversion rates and the, the revenue and the average order value and all this stuff. And it, it works miracles indeed when you implement it correctly. And the other thing I would agree with Ben is really data, but then also this trend related to headless commerce, meaning that every content is shoppable, but then you have a smoothly running platform. And then from each and every interaction being social media, website, public transport, stop or whatever, you can make your transaction and make it profitable uh, wherever the customers are. Yeah. Okay, and indeed, one last thing. Uh, taking a cue from the three Dimitris speaking previously, um, what are some of the failures <laughs> you would like to share with our customer audience here that would make sense for them to avoid in the future? Let me think about it. <laughs> Yeah, I was, you know, indexing on failure. Um, you know, we have, I think, well, in general, right? So when you have a, when you're working on a uh, with a platform like Magento, right? I mean, it's, um, y y you you get it. You hopefully you get a good agency, like so you have a good integrator to help um, take your requirements um, and and understand how that maps into um, how the how the software models things and tends to solve uh, solve those things. Um, I think when 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 there is when there is misunderstanding when there's when there's a, whether it's a poor project management whether it's it's a being mismatched the wrong the wrong solution for the wrong for the wrong merchant um, those are those are by far the biggest failures that we see uh, so I find it's really really important uh, to have conversations um, on the ground like you know with the technical team. Um, understand. Uh, basically, you want you want to be sure as a merchant that um, that the team that you're working with really does understand both your um, your requirements and then also the requirements um, the requirements of the software itself. Um, and if you do that, it, you know the, the the nice thing is you can even still make a, a bad choice, but you will know that it will become evident. Uh, straight away, and and that's that's the most important thing is that that merchants end up on the correct platform for them. 
Well, I don't have now in mind a clear example of failure, but uh, I can assure you that uh, not being with the trend is a failure. I will give you one example. For example, one, one year ago, it was that trend of Kendama. Everybody was playing with Kendama. And uh, we saw this increasing trend in, in Google we, because we used that data. We saw uh, this on Google Trends, and uh, the first uh, the first thought was uh, let's discuss with uh, all the small shops uh, and uh, small shops with toys, and uh, to to bring them to marketplace. And then uh, one week after, when the the trend was increasing, uh, the the traffic from Google moved to to our marketplace platform because we we in that moment we we were selling more than thousand of of different kendamas. So not being with the trend can uh, can not be a, can, you can lose a lot. This is a, the, a, a big tip I, I, I can share right now. Yeah, and the other thing to, to have in mind that failure is a part of life every day. So indeed the slogan of the conference is there to scale there, scale. Do not, do not be afraid to make mistakes because this is where you learn from and this is actually you become better and more profitable every day. Thank you guys for your insights. And Thanks for moderating.